Welcome! Oh, I thought I wouldn't get here on time. Welcome! Welcome all! Welcome to the many, to the few, to the high, to the low. That's right, people who are fucked up on weed and people who are sad. That's what I meant by high and low. Did you think I meant status? Did you think that's the way I always pronounce the word status? It's not. I like to mix it up. I don't like to mix it up to the point where I cannot communicate with people. Let's say... Let's say my legs were crushed by some machinery. <laughs> what kind of machinery, Paul? Oh, my God. What are you? A reporter? <laughs> A famous one? You know what I almost said was Helen Thomas. I don't know why. She is my go-to reporter name every single time. She's dead and in the ground. And soon no one will remember that she even lived on this earth. Sad. She was a groundbreaking lady. And a lady-breaking lady. That's right. She got into fights with ladies. Foxy boxing, they call it now. But back then... (laughs) It was called the Helen Thomas sport. Because she initiated it. She was the first woman in the White House press corps to start a fight club. And women only. Why can't women have their own fight club? Oh, because it's dumb? (laughs) Good call. Stop fighting, everyone. (laughs) This is a plea to all. Don't be a Helen Thomas about it. Stop fighting each other in alleys. Oh, also, stop being your own imaginary nemesis slash friend. Can you believe they did that on Mr. Robot? You gotta be kidding me. Like in every way you could tell from the first episode. Well, he's imaginary. Uh, Maybe not. No, he absolutely was and is. How about this? How's this for lame? All the characters of Mr. Robot are made up. That's not based on a true story. Fake. Fake. I, I, you know, you can't, you can't do an internet comment on a TV show. You can go online, find a message board, whatever. I'm talking about when you're watching the show to actually write a comment on the show so that everyone can see it. I wrote it on my TV screen with my wife's lipstick. I wrote fake. And of course I wrote, welcome to the wonderful world of AIDS. (laughs) I'm constantly writing that lipstick on any flat surface. Does anyone know that urban legend? (laughs) I forget what the kidney people wrote. It was like, go to the hospital or something. We took your kidney, right? Would it have been that much? If the the person you're stealing the kidneys from is unconscious, you can't drop them off in front of the hospital. Or how about this? A block from the hospital. In some ice. Well, I guess that's where it falls apart. I mean, what, are you going to drag a clawfoot bathtub a block away from the emergency room? Put the person in, fill it with ice. You know what? Kidney fevers? You got me on this one. You guys, of course you've thought this all out. Well, this happened sooner than I expected, but I apologize to all kidney thieves. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest on. We have a free-form conversation inspired by a question, a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then, myself and some improviser pals, we make up a story. And it's just fun. No one's trying to hurt no one. If you thought this podcast was about trying to hurt people and you took it as a challenge to listen to it, Look elsewhere, my friend. If my friend, you indeed are. If, if this is actually a friend of mine in real life. We should have this conversation off podcast. And now it is time. Oh, hold on a second. Did you think that this podcast was not scored by Evan Schletter? 
It is. That's the proof. <laughs> now it is time to introduce my special guest. This young person is a fantastical comedian and improviser. You've seen her on all sorts of television shows. And she also hosts a regular show here in Los Angeles called Turnt Up. T-U-R-N-T. It's slang, guys. Young. Please say hello to Eliza Skinner. Hey. Eliza, thank you for being here. I tried to have a real young voice when I said hey. Well, now you're a young person. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You're younger than me by a long Well, you are mile. 102 years old. That's right. Yeah. That's why they call you the father of comedy. That's right. <laughs> I invented some of it. Yeah. yeah. Way back All when. All the stuff with falling down. That was you, right? And That's cards. right. Yep. That's right. That's the best stuff. And this conversation is brought to you by Smuckers. <laughs> now, I have, you guys got it, right? Good. Good work. I have a question for you, Eliza. This is from okay. our previous episode's guest. Great. That question is, do with this what you will. Oh, God. What's the deal with Mario Lopez? You know, what isn't, I feel like what isn't the deal hmm. with Mario Lopez? He's Ooh. like he's like an origami uh, uh, treasure that yeah. is constantly unfolding into more treasures. Like, you think you know what he can do. Oh, he's, he's uh, A.C. Slater. That's it. That's all he is. No big deal. Don't pay attention. Wait, what? He can host a show also? Oh, hold on. I didn't see that coming. Were you genuine when he, when he made the transition <laughs> from teen sitcom actor to host of Extra? Were mm -hmm. you surprised? I was. I was like, oh, he's still around. Also, <laughs> with a good haircut, he looks a lot better. He looks terrific. That was a treat. There's no denying he looks terrific. Because I was Zach Morris all the way. Were you really? Absolutely. Yeah. High and tight, mean to people, good sneakers. <laughs> Love mean, it. Mean to people. <laughs> that is my type. <laughs> sadly. Sadly. <laughs> that was it. That was a show that you watched when you were a kid. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you watch it as an adult as well? Mm -hmm, yeah. Like into college and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. 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 I remember getting ready for work and it would be playing like on some channel at whatever 6 a.m. <laughs> and I'm like, perfect. Because <laughs> uh, I don't remember all the words to every single episode yet. So this will be what I do before I go to work every day. Are you are you prone to nostalgia? Yeah, I think so. I'm, uh, yeah, big time. Recently, my thing has been um, trolling eBay for far side t-shirts. You mean trolling in the sense that a fisherman trolls? Uh, yes, not in, not the in the sense, sense that I'm like, troll. ha ha, what a dumbass t-shirt, you <laughs> idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and did you say Far Side T-shirt? Yeah, the cartoon by Gary Larson. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, that's where that's that's my comedy sweet spot. You're looking for some cows having a conversation. Yeah, I like some worms and spectacles. Uh, that's what I'm all about. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a time when you kind of realized, uh, like, can you appreciate things no. uh, the same? way? <laughs> No, I'm like, fuck these things. And I kick them over, all of them. It's a two-part question. Oh, okay. Can, Next part to it. Can you appreciate things? Hey, can you, which has been asked and answered. Okay. Uh, can you appreciate, uh, uh, like, a Save by the Bell in a non-ironic way? Is there irony for you or is it, because when you were a kid, it wasn't ironic. Right. You were watching. You were like, this is a great show yes. for me. Yes. I, I think at this point I can't. But there was also some crossover bridge where I was like, Zach Morris, still fine as hell. Sure. Um, Kelly Kapowski, still what I want to look at or look like. I would like, oh. hey, both, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I would just stare at myself in a mirror and stroke my face if I was a young <laughs> Tiffany Amber Thiessen. <laughs> just loving me. Uh, she, that's the, the ideal couple. So white. So white. Very white indeed. They, yeah. That was a fairly white show with the exception of Lark Voorhees. And Mario Lopez. And Mario Lopez, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Um, have you seen him as a host of a TV show? Like extra? Yes. Yes. Do you think he does a good job? I think he does a job. <laughs> there was an episode of extra where there was some like kind of gross story going around, like an octo mom type thing. It wasn't the octo mom. I remember, the, I remember Billy Bush taking a stand on the octo mom saying Billy Bush gets in there. He mixes it up. He he's opinions. not, he's, he's not, not afraid to yeah. let people know he takes his job as the anchor of whatever that show is very seriously. <laughs> yeah. 
And he took a stand and said, I'm not going to report on the Octomom. I love it. Because she's not a celebrity. Not new. She doesn't have a TV show. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, I, rem I will never forget his intonation of this. It's gross. <laughs> but then he said, hey, if they make a reality TV show about the Octomom, then we'll cover it. Oh, what? I, what? what? I this no longer stand? respect this stance. It's exactly. It's yeah. like he, if he she felt gets paid like, to be garbage. Yeah. I want to get in on it. It wasn't entertainment. It's yeah. not entertainment until it's a TV show. If you're just a thing out in the world <sighs> that people... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But Mario Lopez, so it was some story where, oh, it was like fat pictures of Jessica Simpson that were making the rounds. And he's <laughs> oh, like, no. we didn't want to show you these pictures. We didn't want to comment on it. But our extra friends have spoken. So we're going to show the pictures. So basically, he's saying... Of course, we have He's some saying, sense I'm of taste. I'm better than this show. Of course, but you, you all out there, you idiots, yep. you want to see these fat pictures? Here you go. Our yeah. extra friends have spoken. I wonder if that was like, if if that he, that was a, a a wife thing, like a like. <laughs> You're not going to do – well, but I have to – but my job. Oh, gosh. How do I answer this? Uh, I don't like it. I – yeah. but I also need to get paid. He so. goes to the producers. He says, look, yeah. guys, I'm in a bind. Yeah. This was really going to wreak yeah. havoc for me at home. Yeah. Is maybe, there some kind of disclaimer? Maybe that's unfair to be like, only a woman would care about that. Not <laughs> not Mario Lopez, you know, who's known for his feminist stance. Um, <laughs> but as I said, on the last episode – Mario Lopez uh, at the the Emmy's red carpet walked up to another b entertainment correspondent who was pregnant and put his hand nope. right on her. <laughs> Don't do that. Exactly. Don't do that. Exactly. And he said, <sighs> "It's it's the only time it's ever okay to just go up and no, put your hand on a woman." No, it's not. Yes, I exactly. want to. I want to write a song so people can remember. Like, don't touch black people's hair. Don't touch pregnant <laughs> ladies' bellies. Don't do that. Stop doing that. Nobody likes it when you do that. <laughs> And then, you know, it'll be so catchy. People always have it stuck in their head, and mm -hmm. they won't do that anymore. I know that I will. See? Uh, can you watch a full half hour of one of those shows or hour? How long are those no. shows, those entertainment shows? No. And I used to be able to. I used to, Me like, too. enjoy it. And now I'm just like, it feels like someone, like, 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 Pushing chewed up food into my mouth. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I do. Like, oh, oh I already know all this, and I'd never cared about it. And, <laughs> mm. When you were when you were a kid, were you enamored of entertainment, and was it something that you consumed yes, a but lot back then? Ever there was so much more glamour. You know, there was the, you knew about lifestyles of the rich and famous. That's right. <laughs> Why? Has that not been rebooted? No. That, that really should be. I did see an episode of Wife Swap that had uh, Robin Leach on it. So that was pretty Recently? Close. Yeah, like within the last couple of years. I, he, can I tell you? Is he still alive? Yes, I okay. think. I don't know. When they taped this, he was. <laughs> right. Wouldn't it be terrible if he wasn't? They were just dragging him around. And they're like, this is where Robin sits and the birds peck at him. <laughs> it's just, or it's just his widow on yeah. the Wife Swap. <laughs> She's like, well, it's nicer when there's someone here. <laughs> um no, yeah. So he's he was still alive in the show, and he and his wife, wife much younger, they have they live in Vegas. Big shock. They each have their own house connected by a pool, and I was like, "Yes, this is the way to live." Can you imagine? I you just swim over and have breakfast. My wife and I, before we got married, before we moved in together, we ended up living across the street from each other. Oh, that's so cute. And it was great. And I think it it uh, it it delayed us moving in together because it was great because we were so close to each other. We could spend the same amount of time with each other, but then you could go home to your own stuff and space and everything. Right. And you had the pulley across the street so you could send each other a little <laughs> That's notes. That's right. That's right. We had a little, <laughs> we made it into a little gondola Aww. and we, 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 yeah. We, we did you share a cat notes. that way too? Of course we did. Okay, good, yeah. good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basket. I had a spade. She had a neutered. Oh, well, um, everyone was taking care of it. That's right. Um, but I, I, the idea of, of, and you see it like on Downton Abbey, like separate bedrooms mm -hmm. where if you want to spend the night together, you can, but if you want to have a, oh, let's be honest, you want to get a good night's sleep? Yes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I happen to be someone who is generally attracted to and involved with men sure. and men tend to be people who generally often snore the fuck through the night. Excuse my language. It's quite all right. Big time snorers mm -hmm. in your gender. Mm hmm I, I'm a bad sleeper. How am I going to do? How am I going to have that be the rest of my life? May I'm going to murder someone. May I say this? Okay. This is your experience because you are not a snorer. Yes. And your partners yes. are of the same gender. Yes. I'm here to tell you, 
it is not a one gender issue. Okay, so ladies are big time snorers also? They can be is what I'm saying. I'm saying they yeah, can. Yeah, so be. that wouldn't fix the problem either. No. But yeah, I uh, oh god, I can't I can't imagine just I mean that's I think why maybe why I'm not married. I cannot imagine committing to a year of sli- a year, a lifetime of sleeping with someone who snores every single night. Has every boyfriend you've ever had snored? Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Maybe it's a type that you're attracted to. Oh, God. are there are there ones out there who don't? There might. I don't. I don't snore on the regular. Oof. I think I, I think everyone is is prone to a little snore here and there. See, but with me, because I've had this and it's so maddening, I, I will. I know. I will like twilight zone myself while I, where I'll like finally meet somebody and he won't be a snorer, but mm-hmm. it'll be like a night terror murderer or something. And it'll be like so much worse. Wait, and I'll so be like, yeah, you don't snore as I'm like waking up and he's like, you know, strangling me to death or something. So he's having a night terror that involves strangling you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Where I'm like, I better be happy with the snoring because <laughs> it could be a lot worse. Do you have any sleep issues at all? I don't sleep through the night. I'm a terrible sleeper. So like the tiniest Are you thing very wakes l- me up. R- that's like me too. Yeah. So that's the thing. If I was a heavy sleeper, who cares? But no. And then once I'm up, oof, I'm up. Did you ever sleepwalk? No. No, I've never sle- sleepwalked. I've sl- like I do things in my sleep. Like, oh, like I, like I'll like sit up and do th- like I. Oh, oh, I what? <laughs> my first job was uh, was uh, as a you know, a grocery packing person. Um, and uh, we called them courtesy clerks at my grocery store. Oh, I've never heard that term before. Yeah, so not courtesy bagger, clerk. courtesy clerk. Mm, bagger would be in a different neighborhood. Certainly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we were courtesy clerks. And I, uh, I remember waking myself up because I was sitting up in bed bagging groceries. No. For a bag that wasn't there. Oh. Yeah, stuff like that. My college roommate talked in her sleep all the time. Did she say interesting stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. I would have conversations with her because I would get bored with – because after a while I was like, oh, this is happening. Mm -hmm. And she would be like – she would get like really mad at me for talking to her. She'd be like, well, you need a turkey. And I'm like, well, you should have bought the turkey. And she's like, no, it's yours. I'm like, I don't even like turkey, so no. And my next-door neighbor one time in the dorm room over – her roommate told me about this, that one night she sat up in bed, fully asleep, and just said, Eliza is bad. Oh. And I went back to sleep. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm a witch. <laughs> How, what does that mean? <laughs> so, yeah. And do these people have any recollection of this at all the nope. next day? No. Wow. No, yeah. Yeah. And I would, uh, you know, I, I didn't have the technology at the time to record it. Uh, this was back in the 1800s. I think about that sometimes. The things that when it's so easy now, and I there's so many things we missed when we did not have phones in our pockets at all times yeah. and recording devices. Yeah. But, oh, so much stuff. But horror movies and action movies were much better. That's true. Like, you didn't have to. You didn't have to come up with the reason why there was no cell reception. Yeah, there's or, no tension anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also. In those movies where they go through the whole thing of like, I'm not getting any signals. Why can't they just have the person lose the phone at the beginning of the adventure? You know what I mean? So we don't have to deal with it anymore. Well, because then it would be a much more emotional thing. You'd have someone going through all the stages of losing a phone. (laughs) I think that would make the movie better. (laughs) Because as it is, it's frustrating as a as a as a person who owns a cell phone to oh, watch do you have a person. A cell phone? I do have a cell phone. I don't know. They seem crazy. No, uh, th- there's so many times when it comes in handy. <sighs> yeah, but I feel like then I'd be one of those people. You know? I know. I well, look, we'll talk about this off mic. Okay. But you go through. It, it's frustrating to watch somebody be frustrated. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's not fun. That's not entertaining. I, well, I feel like that. It just in general, I I can't like. Oh God, do you remember that movie, The Money Pit? Oh, horrible. Cannot for that stand reason. It. So it's frustrating. So upsetting. It's so upsetting. I, and that's like a whole genre for me. Anything where it's like, oh no, a bad thing, and it's going to slowly yeah. happen, and then it happens. I'm just like, I gotta go. I can get popcorn at home. Just knowing that everything that they're trying to do is going to fail mm-hmm. for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> It's not. It's not yeah. fun. And these are the people we're supposed to like. Yeah, we're gonna. So make you what? Like these why characters. is this fun? Yeah. There was a show called Green Acres. Oh, which was about a place to be. Yes, it was about a city man who uh, marries this glamorous lady, and then he decides he's done with city life, so he moves to the rural countryside, where everyone's a weirdo, mm-hmm. and so he's trying to get things done. He he wants to be a farmer, like a gentleman farmer. So he wants to buy seeds at the stupid local store, and then it's like they don't understand. 
understand what he's talking about or they take his words literally and twist it around. And it's just this guy getting frustrated <laughs> week after week after week. And I was a little kid watching the show and it t- tied my stomach up in knots. Yeah, I didn't remember that aspect of it. I just remembered the like him trying to farm with, uh, was it Jaja? Ava, 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 Gabor, Gabor, Ava Gabor, as his wife, being like, but diamonds, darling. <laughs> oh, I planted the diamonds in the ground instead of seeds. Did I make a mistake? I wanted to grow a diamond bush. <laughs> oh, I painted the pig because I wanted it to be beautiful. <laughs> yeah. But I forgot to leave an open space at the base of his spine, and now he's suffocated to oh, death in his no. own skin. <laughs> like Goldfinger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's all I wanted to do was okay. finally get us to a place where we draw a correlation between Green Acres and, and Goldfinger. Goldfinger. <laughs> Eliza Skinner, thank you so much. Thank you, Paul F. Tompkins. We're going to take a break. Okay. And I'm going to ask you for a location. Oh, gosh. And then, oh, Evan, even playing that music drives me up a wall. Even even the theme song to Green Acres was frustrating. <laughs> because he's like, here's what I want to do. Square. And she's like, no, I want the opposite. <laughs> All right. We're going we're gonna to take a break. When we come back, we will have our location from Eliza Skinner, and we will meet our improviser pals. All this and nothing else. When Spontaneous Nation <laughs> returns. What are you doing, New Year's? New Year's Eve. What? You're sleeping on a terrible mattress? Hi, Frankie Valley for Lisa. Lisa has done away with their mattress company. Uh, 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 did you follow? I well, Okay. So I, I asked a musical question. What are you doing New Year's Eve? And then I follow it up with sleeping on a terrible mattress. That's a terrible plan. But my what I'm do, trying to do now is tell you all about Lisa, which is a good mattress. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. It's been a long time. I haven't done one of these ads. Lisa's done away with the awkward mattress showroom experience. They've created a luxury mattress that is ordered completely online and ships for free to your doorstep. Compressed in a box the size of a mini fridge. I, I'm hung up on uh, the introduction of the ad. I, I, I feel like I'm rusty. I haven't done one of these in a while. And uh, I feel like I, I can't remember now if I stated the concept clearly. Maybe I got too hung up on the song. My Okay. So you understand that Lisa is a, it's a great mattress. They deliver it. You order it online. <laughs> Sorry. I, I started smoking again. It's It's not good. Uh, guys, I, I, I let me just get the Lisa stuff out of the way that we can get into personal business. The 10-inch mattress comes in all sizes, and it's crafted with three unique foam layers for cooling, supportive comfort. That sounds great to me. Lisa gives you 100 nights to try your mattress risk-free. <laughs> I wish I had something in my life that was risk-free, but sadly, nothing ever was. You know, I struck out on my own to become a performer, and uh, if you've seen Jersey Boys, you know that that was not without its risks and uh, not without its downfalls, but... Uh, Everything's okay now. I, you know, I started smoking. I just got, I get depressed around the holidays. So, uh, you know, I, I go back to old habits and I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, uh, especially as a singer, it's, it's terrible for your voice. Lisa is like the Tom shoes for mattresses for every 10 they sell. They donate one to a shelter. Now that's great. Especially this time of year, you know, you gotta be thinking about other people, uh, you know, we're just over the holidays. I mean, we stop being nice to people. No, this is you got to redouble your efforts and be good to those around you all year long. Have you ever read a Christmas Carol? The idea is you keep Christmas in your heart all year. That means, you know, be a decent human being. That's what Charles Dickens was trying to say. Not that he was a great guy. He had mistresses and stuff like that. But uh, I feel guys, I feel like I'm getting off on a tangent here. My point is, go to l-e-e-s-a dot com slash pft and enter promo code pft at checkout to get seventy five dollars off. Now that's a great deal. l-e-e-s-a dot com slash pft promo code pft gets you seventy five dollars off at checkout. I got to get my act together, and uh, next time I do one of these ads, I promise you, I'm going to be focused and in control. No. <laughs> hey, when are the podcast ad awards coming up? Because I have a nomination, I think, to make for the best podcast ad. <laughs> Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation, everyone. I'm still me and you're still you. Let's never change. It is time to meet... Our pals from the world of Make Pretend. 
sitting right next to me. First time sitting in this chair? Yes. I think usually, so, right? Yes. Usually that's right. over there. She was just on the last episode, I think. <laughs> yeah. Same characters today. And it's uh, all, that is her pledge. <laughs> She's pledged to do the exact same characters. Please say hello to one of our favorites here, Jean Villapeak. Hello. Jean, hello. You're listening Hi. for them hello, to say hello. hello. So, sometimes we do that on the show. Oh. Everyone, take a moment to out loud say hello to Jean. Say hello, Jean. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> Cleveland. Jean, how have you been <laughs> specifically? Yeah, Why answer. Cleveland? I like Ohio as a go-to place. Jean, where are you from? New Jersey. Originally. New Jersey, the state. Yeah, and then I lived in Chicago for 15 years. So Chicago, that's... a city inside another state. That's right. Okay, I'm cracking this case. <laughs> how long did you live in New Jersey before you moved to Chicago? Through the end of high school, 18 years. And mm-hmm. then you were like, out of there. I was done with the Garden State. Yep. Where, where in New Jersey? Uh, it's a small town called Bernardsville with it had about I think eight thousand people when we were there. So it is a small. small town. Everybody My knew heavens. everybody. Yeah. How many stop signs? <laughs> I don't know, but the center of town put in a stoplight like a year before I was born, and that was a big deal in the center of town. Because they had so. not had one before. Yeah, and I guess it was just getting too stressful. There we go. Probably stop signs getting before that. Too stressful. <laughs> These stop signs aren't cutting it. No more stop signs. We- All lights now. Very much. <laughs> uh, are your parents still there? Uh, my father is, and my mom retired to North Carolina, where a lot of people from there are retiring to North Carolina because I think their parents retired to Florida, and they're like, it's not really retiring. I'm just moving to North Carolina, you know? <laughs> to, know. to escape the stigma of retirement? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, those retirees, oh, yeah. Oh, I heard she retired. Well, welcome <laughs> to you. Los Angeles, if no one's done that yet. <laughs> it's eight years. I've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> it gets better. Gene, I'm going to stop talking to you and start talking to someone else. Okay. That process has begun. Seated across from Gene, this gentleman, he is one of the co-hosts of the We Got This podcast on our rival network, <laughs> Maximum Fun. I have so many secrets already. I'm taking them all back to you HQ. Son of a bitch. Too bad. Tell that Jesse Thorne I'm coming for his head. How <laughs> <Hal> Lublin. <laughs> Hello. Welcome, Hal. Thank you for having me back. Thank you for being back. It's been a little bit since uh, you've been on the show. It has. How much of a bit has it been? Three or four weeks. (laughs) At least. At least. (laughs) Now, Hal, how are things going at We Got This? They're going very well. We did our New York show. Which uh, which went wonderfully with Mm -hmm. uh, John Hodgman. Yes. Spontanea Nation and Paul Tompkins alike. That's right. And uh, we're we're continuing to put together more live shows. Mark Gagliardi, he lives in New York. He does. So you do this show where you're here and he's there. Yes. I don't know, Hal. <laughs> I don't know. You want to know how we do it? Yeah, I do. Like a good magician. I can't reveal all the tricks, but I will say. Illusions, do you mean? Like yeah. a good magician would say? No, they're tricks. Oh, Hal. Bastard magicians. Oh, oh. Trying to fool me? Hal. Uh-uh. Oh. I know that that handkerchief's still there. Don't start a flame war with magicians. It's too late. It's already started. I guess you're right. So you do it on Skype or something? Yeah, Skype. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Seated next to Hal Lublin. This guy, if he's not sitting next to Hal Lublin, he's sitting next to someone else. <laughs> he is my colleague in the Super Ego program and Hal's own Super Ego Forgotten Classics. Yeah. A third one eventually will be available. As of this recording, it is not yet. But as of the release, I bet it will be. Yay! Na 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 na. Hey hey hey! Go to Hal.fm. Mark McConville. Hi, Mark. We haven't seen you since our live from Largo episode with Kristen Shaw. That's right. That was a fun night, wasn't it? Man, it was really good. Didn't we have a good time? I did. We sang a song for people. Oh yeah. People liked it. It brought a tear to the eyes. Oh, man. That was a delight. No one gets to know what the song is. They get to know. They can oh, know. They? Yeah. Yeah. The song was Danny's Song by Kenny Loggins. Yeah. Also covered famously by Ann Murray. I always, I have trouble with this. When I hear songs that are, you know, and I heard Ann Murray's version first and sure. just always thought she wrote it. And then when I it was revealed that Kenny Loggins wrote it, I was like, no fucking way. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You refused to believe. Well, it. just like I, I know Kenny Loggins as Danger Zone. 
So it's just like, there's no way <laughs> right. that he started the, a Danny song and right, right, got right. to Danger Zone. But he did it. He did it. Give him credit, everyone. A long, slow evolution for our own Kenny Loggins. What's the log jammer doing now, you think? Uh, I just saw him on an episode of Playing House on USA. Is that true? Enjoy the free plug, ladies. Um, Mark, you did they mind? call him the log jammer? Yeah, they did. Of course okay. they did. Great. And they and he the whole plot was he's staying in a hotel called the Wind Jammer. Mark, you remind me of Saint Thomas, who doubted our Lord until he put his hands in our Lord's wounds. I'm not religious. You don't need to be. <laughs> I got it covered, ladies and gentlemen. It is time. <laughs> it is time to reveal our location and tell our story. But first, let me tell you this. In order to tell our story, we use sound effects to move us about in time. Let's say we're in a scene, and then there's something happening at the exact same time. We want to shift to another scene happening at the exact same time. We use this cut to Evan. That music is making me anxious. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my anticipation. Play play something something relaxing. (laughs) It doesn't always happen, but sometimes it happens. (laughs) <laughs> if we want to move laterally in time, we hear this cut to sound effect. Whoosh, we're over there. Let's say someone is having a memory. We're going to go backwards in time for some reason. We'll hear this flashback sound effect. Hmm, flashback. Let's say we want to return to the present day or go into the far future or the near future. Just the future. <laughs> Look, future's future. So why should it be? We'll hear this flash forward sound effect. (laughs) That's right, Depeche Mode fans. We're in the future. Fast fashion. All right. Those are our sound effects. Any of our improvisers can uh, touch them at any time. Touch them. You can (laughs) caress them. (laughs) Mark's doing it right now. And it's gross. It's grossing everyone out. And now it is time to reveal our location from Eliza Skinner. And that location is... Inside of a 40-year-old woman's purse. We take you now to inside of a 40-year-old woman's purse. Well, this is certainly strange. I did not expect to end up here. And I did not expect to uh, be accompanied by, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Tissue. Tissue. Okay. Tissue. And you seem to be a, a, an actual tissue. That's right. Okay. With a mouth and vocal cords. Yeah. I don't want to reveal all of my secrets. <laughs> no, I, I understand. I'm sure, there's, I'm sure there's a lot about you that I would not understand. Well, I need, I don't want to apologize, but I've been in here quite some time. And mm. when I first got here, I was crisp. I'll tell you. Sure. I'm not. A raggedy tissue by choice. Right. It's just uh, by the circumstance of being in this purse for... How long would you say? Uh, maybe nine, ten months. Wow. All yeah, right, well, that's nothing, man. Uh-oh. And and you are? I'm gross tic-tac. Hi, gross tic-tac. Hi. I mean, can I just call you tic-tac or do you prefer the full... And whatever, man. I got pretty low self-esteem. You, you somehow got loose from the box and you're covered with a lot of stuff. I lost all my friends. That's... <laughs> I'm very sorry. I've been just down here in the seam. Mm-hmm. You've been down to the seam before, friend? No, this is my, this is my first time inside a woman's purse. I Tissue, am, who is this new fish? Hey, I'm not great. sure, but I just want to say, if you have any liquid on you, that could kill gross Tic Tac. So if you have any liquid on you... Not to mention what it might do to tissue. No, I, I don't seem to have any liquid on me. I I, uh, I feel, I know it's dark in here, but I think I'm... Um, I think I'm nude. I think that uh, what happened was, well, it's a weird story. So now, Doctor, the idea of this ray is just to make me slightly smaller so my clothes will fit better? Yes. So many people have trouble with the size of the clothing. So do I go to a tailor and I can just make you a little smaller and it fits you like a glove? <laughs> so it's like... The... Mm. Sorry, I remember the knock-knock joke. Oh, sure. Oh, what was it? Knock-knock. Who's there? The, uh, the shrinking ray. Shrinking ray who? Shrinking ray, solve all your problems. You ready? Okay. Now, 
you've tried this on other people before? Yes. And it's always worked out the way you intended it to work out. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. Oh, oh. No, no oh, further questions. Okay. All right. So um, go ahead and hit me with it. Boom. You're human? You're human? Yeah. You're, you're shrunk down human. Yeah, I'm a shrunk down human. I realized the question I should have asked was, uh, has it worked out the way the people wanted it to work out, not the way the doctor wanted it to work out? Because I think this is what he wanted. And now I'm just a tiny little Well, now, person. now. Let's not judge anyone. Oh, uh, uh, hello. It's me, Abraham Lincoln. What? <laughs> Mr. President. Yes. I may be trapped on the side of this penny. Oh. But I'm still here to make sure that all of the people and beings of this purse can I, can I, work he's together. A, he's a great hey, leader. Hey, can I can I stop you there for just one second? Go ahead, son. I think it's a bit uh, it's a bit grand to refer to yourself as Abraham Lincoln. You you you're a penny. If I could look at you with both of my eyes. Well, you don't you don't have both eyes. I'm in profile one eye. for good reason. Yeah, you're a penny. You're I'm, a drawing on a penny. I'm looking forward into the future. How is you're just looking to one side? How is that definitely looking forward? That part's the future. If I look the other way, I'd be looking at the past. What if I just turn the penny around? Whoa! <laughs> you are. Come on. I see it all. The debates with Douglas, splitting rails, being a lawyer, being born in Denver. Yes. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. I see. There's a little D. So that's where I came from. Yeah. You're not you're not the president. How dare you talk to our fearless leader like hey, that? Hey, hey, take the heck. Take it easy. He he's the best leader we've ever had. <laughs> well, is that is that everyone or we well, all we didn't think, catch your oh, name, stranger. I think you should give him a chance. He's just confused. He's new here. Oh, oh thank you very much. Uh, and wh- who are you? Oh, uh, I'm nail polish. I <laughs> I think it's going to work out for me. <laughs> I'm new here, too. I, I just got here, oh, gosh, what was it, a couple of days ago? Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't been used yet either, You're like you, but I think I'm going to be. <laughs> well, you're, you're kind of a peculiar shade. It's sort of a I'm, sort of chartreuse. I'm daring. <laughs> I guess. I think. I think things are going to really change. <laughs> but, I mean, do you think you're an everyday nail polish, or do you think you're a sort of sorry to say but like a one and done I don't I don't know what you mean uh, nothing nothing I I don't mean anything forget I said anything I'm you just mean someone would use me and just leave me it happens all the time believe me I no, I'm know. not like you I'm not like any of you well I'm really not like any of you I'm a human being yeah we don't like you hey I don't like you I can't speak for everyone I don't else. like you either. Questioning the founder of liberty and freedom. Hold on a second. Somebody seems to be asleep. What is it? What's there? Who's there? Who's speaking? What, uh, hello, my, my my name is Thomas. I'm a tiny human. A tiny human? Yeah. In the purse? <laughs> yes. Did you ask my permission to be in here? Uh, uh, no. Uh, who are you? I'm the wallet. Whoa. I run this place. Be careful. Oh. What I, do you want? What's your intention, little I, human? I, I just want to—I just want to get out of this person. I want to be a, a return to my normal size. Oh, Abraham Lincoln! Oh boy! Uh, just service. What are you doing out of the pouch? I freed myself, like I'm going to free George Washington and Franklin Roosevelt and, and all of us. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna be free. I proclaim it now. All of you. Well, you certainly belong here, little human. Everybody but me wants to get out. Do you hear that? Yeah, That's elevator that. music and an automatic door. We're going into a grocery store. Oh. Ooh. This is my chance. Maybe it's mine, too. Maybe maybe I'll get used in a grocery store. Why would someone... Why would she put on nail polish in a... Grocery store. Gosh, anything can happen if you believe. I yeah, I guess, but it seems like an awkward time. She's sort of a slut. Uh, She'll put on nail polish anywhere. That's very judgmental. Well, I've been around a while and seen a lot of humans. You're you're very well. Wait, so what does that mean? Were you somebody else's wallet before? You're saying that you. I'm a goodwill wallet. Yes, I've been around. Oh, a. Go- I'm so. 
mad. I just like he never even called me back. You know what I mean? And just oh dear. Oh gross. Oh god. Oh my god, all over my wallet. Oh, uh, the leather. Hey, look at that wallet here on the sidewalk. Yeah, it looks dumb. Get rid of it. Let's take turns spitting in it first. Good <laughs> idea. Then it's on to Goodwill. <laughs> why not? Oh, why not a baker's billfold? <laughs> Those are some gross stories. I'm sure you've abused your wallet when you were your regular size and without even knowing it. You've abused all of us. What? That's very unfair. Humans. Sounds like you definitely abuse donuts. No, I don't follow that. Don't Didn't follow. you need to be just a little oh, bit smaller? Oh, yes, I understand. Um, yeah, donuts, uh, crullers, uh, popovers. Honey, I just think you should maybe just have some vegetables. Why? They taste like the dirt. Your shirt is not able to be buttoned. So what? I don't have to go anywhere or be seen by anyone. Honey, I'm just concerned about your heart health. <sighs> All right. I love you. I love you too. We've been married for quite some time. I know. And you're the most important person in the world to me. The only way that we're still together is our separate bedrooms. <laughs> That's right. Now, isn't it better that now I, I have my horrible snoring <laughs> due to... <laughs> My great fat jowls weighing down my my chin so that my mouth is constantly open. You don't have to hear that anymore. Tom, you talked me into it, and I love you all the more for it. Midge, you're the best wife a guy could ever ask for. I just, could you go on a diet? Or there's got to be something you could do to just shrink just a little bit. Yeah, diet sounds risky. I tell you what I'll do. I saw an ad in the back of a comic book. That I think is the perfect thing for me. Oh, honey, you and your comics. <laughs> this is the one time where it helps. I'm going to make an appointment with a doctor. Well, you were right about the separate bedrooms, though. How could you be wrong I, about this? I read that in my Downton Abbey comics. I'll make an appointment with a doctor tomorrow, okay? All right. I, I love you. I love you. I love you more. I love you. I love you, I love you so much. I love you. I love you more. I'm going to my room. Okay. Yeah, I was... Uh, now I'm just like, I'm just like a miniature fat person. I'm just a tiny little morbidly obese guy. And you don't belong here. No, I, I, of course I don't belong here. It looks to me like he doesn't belong anywhere. What? Ooh. Ooh. Sorry. Did you guys want to see the sun in here? <laughs> Sunglasses. Always here to give you the truth. Ugh. You... Who can see behind your reflective surface to know what you truly are? What are you doing out of your case? Ah, oh, fuck the case. <laughs> Language. That's not what our country was founded on by what? me no. at Gettysburg. By you, didn't found money. The country. <laughs> you are what the country was founded on. Oh, that's a burn on you, Penny. Oh, I feel so burned. <laughs> you burnt. The heat. <laughs> Get used to it, little man. This is where you live now. <laughs> and if there's no use for a Tic Tac or a tissue, there's certainly no use for a little man. You're saying a 40-year-old woman in a grocery store would have absolutely no use for a tiny, naked, morbidly obese man? That's exactly what I'm saying. Oh. Uh, did you say it was twenty nine ninety one? Twenty nine ninety one. Okay, I guess yeah. I'll pay in. Just I don't know, do you take debit cards? We do. Oh, okay. Do you know your pin? Oh, God. Er, You'll, you it requires a, a pin. Uh, okay. Maybe I'll, I'll ca I, I guess you cash You seem to be having trouble. Hey, Just had hey. the, What? Hey. I didn't say anything. Well, how do you, Down here in it, your purse. It's coming from the inside of the purse. Run! <laughs> but I, <laughs> my purse is still on me. Oh, God. <laughs> Why am I not dropping it? What is going to happen? This is crazy. Stuff talking in a purse? What? You guys, this is impossible. We'll find out what happens when Spontanea Nation returns. Well, well, well. It's me, Paul F. Tompkins, the host of Spontanea Nation. Now listen, I'm here with you in the present as you listen to this episode. But in the future, 
Me, Paul from the future, I'm not going to know what my plugs are. And I'm like, well, I don't know what this is so recorded so far in advance. I don't know what to do. Heel, heel, heel. I hate myself. Well, I know what to plug. I'm going to be at San Francisco Sketch Fest in January. That's next month. I'm going to be there uh, the 7th through the 10th of January, and I'm doing a whole mess of shows. Now, Spontaneous Nation Live and Super Ego Live are both sold out already, but keep your eyes peeled because people are often looking to trade tickets and such. So uh, I always try to help out with that and repost and, and all that. But those are going to be very fun shows. Spontaneous Nation Live has uh, Craig Kakowski, Matt Gorley, and Janet Varney, and our special guest will be John Hamm. No wonder it's sold out. And then Super Ego Live, of course, the entire Super Ego team, uh, plus John Hodgman, Amanda Lund, and more people will be joining us for that. That will be a lot of fun. But here's shows you can still get tickets to in San Francisco. Riff Tracks Live. That is going to be amazing. Michael J. Nelson, Kevin Murphy, and Bill Corbett of Mystery Science Theater. And we're going to be doing funny talking over some horrible short films. Um, also a part of that show, Mary Jo Pell and Bridget Nelson, writers from the original MST3K, and uh, John Hodgman again, Adam Savage from Mythbusters, and Cole Stratton and our own little Janet Varney from Sketchfest um, will be there as well. Let's see, uh, the Thrilling Adventure Hour, we're doing a couple Beyond Belief shows, myself and my fake wife, Padgett Brewster. Uh, that is going to be a lot of fun. There's still some tickets left for the early show and a lot of more tickets left for the late show. 7.30 and 10 p.m. on Saturday, January 9th. Do come out and see those shows. They will be a lot of fun. Sunday, the 10th of January, two shows, one in the afternoon, one in the evening. In the afternoon, it's a uh, Q&A uh, with BoJack Horseman people, me, uh, it's the, the creator of the series, Raphael Bob Waxberg and former Spontaneous Nation guest, uh, Lisa Hanwalt, the production designer and producer and former Spontaneous Nation guest, Mike Hollingsworth, the supervising director. He'll never be on Spontaneous Nation. He may be, who knows? That will be at Cobb's Comedy Club. Sunday, January 10th at 3 p.m., and then later that night at 8 p.m., Wheels Off, the Rhett Miller Show. Rhett Miller, the amazing singer-songwriter from the old 97s, he's going to be doing his variety show at the Swedish American Hall uh, featuring me and many other special guests. Comedy, music, it's all the stuff you like. And then back in Los Angeles, Saturday, February 6th, Spontaneous Nation Live returns to Largo at the Coronet. Tickets are available now. Oh, one more thing. Super Ego Live, it's our 10th anniversary. That's right. Super Ego was founded in 2006. It is 2016 in March, 5 March 2016. We're going to celebrate our 10th anniversary with a live show at Largo with the Coronet. Tickets are on sale now. Go to pauliftompkins.com slash live for everything you need in your life, including oxygen and water. Hey, stop running! Okay, hey. I have to stop running. Hey. I Oh god, oh, it's so bright in here. Hey, open up your purse. I, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm opening up my purse to put on my sunglasses. Hold okay. on. Wait, Later, wait. losers. Who's that? Oh, that's better. Wh wh what is this? Is my uh, phone uh, on? In the no, oh hey. my god! Please, please, don't, don't freak out! Oh. Don't freak out! Don't freak out! What? Are I am just a. I'm a human being, and uh, I was the victim of a shrink ray incident. I was just trying to lose a little bit of weight so I could fit into my clothes Shrimp better. Grays like the comic books? Yes, unfortunately, just like the comic books. They're real? Comic books or the shrink ray? Uh, the shrink ray. I've the seen real ray. comic books. Yes. <laughs> What's that? I've seen, I've seen real comic books. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm very nervous. No, hey, I'm nervous too. I've never... Should I put you... Is it okay if I just hold you my hand or do you like to be somewhere? Uh, well, uh, both of those would be great. If you could hold me in my hand and then hold me in your hand and then okay. eventually I would like to be somewhere other than your purse. Let's get you back. Oh, God, it's I. It's, oh, please don't judge me. It's a, I never clean my purse. <laughs> no, play, hey, I'm uh, not going to judge you if you don't judge me for being, you know, in the state that I'm in. Oh, my God. Well, your clothes are huge on you. Yeah. <laughs> I, this is embarrassing, but um, those aren't clothes. That's my, that's my body. It's my many folds and oh, creases. Oh, excuse me. Oops. I'm not one to judge. 
No, it's no judgment taken, but, um... Well, let's just get in the car and I'll take you back where you need to be and screw these groceries. Who needs groceries? I guess our first stop is probably a comic book shop sure. uh, to see if there's an issue that has a, a, a grow ray. Sure. Um, so let's oh, how's go How's this there? one here, actually? Oh, sure. Right. Absolutely. Let's, uh, let's go on in. Ask them, uh, ask them if they have any comic books with new ads. Good afternoon. Hi. Do you have any comic books with yeah. new ads? Um, oh, you're a lady. Are you in high school? Mm, I was. Oh, you're small for an adult. Yeah. Oh. This we don't see a lot of women in here. You're awfully sweaty. Here, let me get you a tissue. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Here you go. Oh, thanks. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. It's my hand. It's my hand. You can have it back. Oh, well, she's just recycling. Uh, uh, here's our new... Uh, our new comics. Thank you. Hey, you guys. Guess what? I think I'm getting out of here. Take me with you. Good for you. I'm, me too. I'm glad. Well, listen, I'll, I'll uh, put in a word for everybody and... I've been... I've been smashed in the running. No! Oh, my, oh my God. God! Oh, no! It's okay. I... Someone should... Someone should try to save Tic Tac, though. I... Oh, I'm my God! Sleeping. It's getting right by Tic Tac! I always, I always wanted to be a different colored Tic Tac. Tic Tac, you gotta get out of there! I can't... Oh, yeah, you're just a Tic Tac. Jump into my pouch! What? The wallet has a pouch! Where the coins are, Abraham. No, I'm not going back. I'm never going back. Oh, God. Here, roll on to me and I'll flip you in. Nail polish. <laughs> oh! Nail polish, are you, are you hanging in there? How are you doing? The light is... It's going out. I can see your brush. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, that's not good. Uh, remember us when you're big again. I will. Remember... All the little things inside of a purse. A 40-year-old woman's purse. Specifically, yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Oh. No. She's caught. She's caught. <laughs> That'll be 1629. <laughs> sure, let me Oh, oh my god. Ew. Oh. T do you have a oh, This is uh, Do you take My debit card's kind of covered in Look, I do my nails as long as I'm single, and it doesn't matter. Can I pay you back for this later? Anything. Yeah. Hey, guys. I am a little woozy in here. It is uh, it smells strongly of nail polish. I'm feeling kind of lightheaded. We've got to find a way to get this purse open so that this human can breathe again. How do we well, get the purse open? If you climb on top of me... And use your arms? Oh, if we only all had appendages. Yeah, I've, I'm kind of the only one. Maybe I can help. Pair of nail clippers at your service. Oh, nail clippers. Uh, how, how can you help? I'll wedge one end of my body in the handle end into the, into the hole and push it apart. The, the little swing out thing? Yes, the swing out thing. <laughs> I can only do this once. But then can you, can you like swing it out? And then do the thing where you turn it over, and then it could be like a sort of diving board. Like I could spring on it and then jump off. Well, here, swing out the nail file part, and you can climb on that. All right. Ooh, it feels weird on my feet, the, the sort of the serrated part. Well, it's... Look, I'm not proud of who I am. No, I, I didn't mean any judgment. It was just I've never stood on a nail file before with my full foot. Well, this part of me spends all day on toenails and fingernails. Okay. I'm not proud of who I am, but if I can do some good before I go, that'll be all right. You didn't need to tell me about the toenails and fingernails part. Never forget the first time I saw a pair of fingernails and a pair of toenails. <laughs> what was it like? Ew, 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 it's on me. Ew, ew, it's on me. Ew, ew. It was terrible. That sounds pretty bad. It was for over an hour that time. <laughs> over an hour? Who needs to file the nails for that long? That's insane. I think she has OCD. Maybe so. <laughs> All right, let me stand up on here and then try right. to uh, open right. it up. Oh, it oh. Ah, it's really got one of those strong kind of snap closures. Ah. 
Uh, let me just get my sunglasses off while we're doing transactions. Whoa, whoa, oh, oh! Hey! Hi! That that's like smells crazy like nail polish oh, there. Oh, God! It's getting kind of poisoned. Why? It's yeah, a guy! Know. Yeah. Uh, beep, beep, boop. I'm a toy. It's a toy. It's a, one of those little uh, uh, keychains. It's keychains. The keys fell off. <laughs> uh, greetings, human. I'm a toy. With the, show me to your keys. Oh my god. Um, toys? There are toys in the store? Oh. I can't find any on the shelves. Oh, what is it? Oh, no. Have it. No, no, have sorry. It. Oh gosh. Cool. Oh my goodness. Let let me go. have it. Oh, child. Have it. She's got me. She's got me. Ah, cool. Oh, what does it do? Hey, little kid, you want $20? No, I want this toy. <laughs> do you like cigarettes? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Officer, um,. Well, I just, I was in my own room for so long that I forgot to check on Thomas, my husband, and I went to his room and he wasn't there, and I just, I'd like to file a missing person report. Can you describe your husband for me? Yes. <laughs> his name hey, is... Hey, sorry, sorry, ma'am. Hey, Pete. Yeah? Did you, did you take your acid reflux medication? No, hold on. Okay, yeah, come on. No. <laughs> it's, it's tough to listen to, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, so can you describe <laughs> your... Uh, can you describe your husband for me? Well, he he he's six foot one, mm-hmm. and he's um a little on the fudgy side. <laughs> it's kind of a bit. If you catch him, if you find him while he's sleeping, he snores. How do his clothes fit, ma'am? Um, mm-hmm. you know how like shirts button up? Yeah, his right around the sort of chestial area mm-hmm. that that it it, it, pu- it puckers open. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So he can get it buttoned, but you can see the skin between the buttons. Yes. Like the shirts in pain. And he has great, <laughs> yeah. he's always wearing great sneakers. <laughs> you know, I've what told it, you before, the sneakers make the man, don't it's they? It's true. Uh, what, how, what, what would you say, uh, these sneakers, what, what makes them great? They're just, they're clean. Mm-hmm. Like and Jerry Seinfeld, white? Um, just depends on the color. He just has a nice. So more than one color. We, Officer, can I be honest with you? I wish you would, man. We have separate bedrooms. So he has plenty of room to store all kinds of different sneakers. May we have access to your husband's bedroom, man? Mm-hmm. Sure. Anything to find my Thomas. Whoa. There's a lot of food wrappers in here. Ouch. Looks like a dumping ground Wait, for hostess. Do you hear that? Oh, there's a cat. Jeez. Where is it? I can't, all I just see is lumps of trash moving. Oh. I know. Is there more than one? It's like that scene in Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, Officers, I didn't know it was... I I didn't know it was this bad over here. I'm sorry you had to see this, man. Yeah. This is. You sure he was a little pudgy? This just seems like a lot of food. Well, that, the last thing. Hey, that cat is going through something. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a cat, or did this just come in from outside? I put I gondoled it over here, and then I just forgot we had it. Oh, that is a gondola <laughs> system. Wow. I couldn't remember what it was called, but then you... You thought it was a ski lift that I was did. far away. I did. I said, is that one of those distant ski lifts? No, it's <laughs> just, it's right here. It's Officers, tiny. officers. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I just mm-hmm. remembered. What's that? The last thing Thomas said to me was, I'll make an appointment at the Shrink Ray Man's. The Shrink Ray Man's. Hey, how about 10 Parliament lights no way. and a lighter? <laughs> oh, uh, I bet my dog would love this. Oh, no, no. Uh, yeah. that, that, that dog I don't like zoom, dogs. Zoom, zoom. Oh. <laughs> He's not an airplane. Oh. He's a real person. He's making me sick. Uh, uh, donuts, come here. Come here, donuts. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Uh, ready, ready, ready? Go get it! Uh, uh, hey, 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 dog. Mm-hmm. I'm a guy. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, you get that I'm not a toy. Okay, good. <laughs> Beep boop. Hey, little girl. Hey, what? I'm not a dog toy. Yeah, you are a toy. I'm a people toy. Oh. How does a toy talk to you? I can't. Are you... Okay, you gotta tell me if it's true. Fuck. Are you a toy? No. <sighs> Listen, do you like science fiction? <sighs> okay, take it, take it, take it easy, take it easy. Wow, she is. <sighs> Just stay in the back seat. I don't care if you scream the whole way, kiddo. We're gonna get to this shrink ray place. <sighs> 
This is it right here. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to park even though it's a 15 minute zone. I don't know how long. I just want to get in there. Okay, and I know it's a hot day, but maybe roll up the windows. Okay. Oh, hello. Well, hello. It's nice to see you again. Do I look familiar to you? Yes. Yeah, you remember me, right? Yes, mm-hmm. but you look so much smaller. <laughs> yeah, so much smaller. Yes. This is my friend, a 40-year-old woman. I, oh, I'm sorry, I don't even really, I don't know your name. Renee, Some- and I get around. You've probably heard of me. <laughs> oh, you're that Renee? That's right. Yeah. Every I've day, Renee? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, every day, Renee. Because every day she likes to play. That's why they call her Renee. Yeah, Okay. Uh, I'm not really looking here. I'm not, I didn't come here to engage in slut shaming. What I'm really trying to do is get back to uh, my normal human height. Oh, I see. You want to be made big again, do you? Oh, doctor, say that again. You want to be made big again, do you? <sighs> what, is, what? I just, are you single? What is wrong with you? This guy's clearly, he's demented. I'm sorry, I'm I'm sorry. I'm married to my work. (laughs) I don't want to make you break those vows. Listen, nobody, nobody make a move. What? I've turned the shrink ray on again. And I will shrink you down so small. Wait, wait, wait. So small. I I thought you were going to make him big again. For what? For free? I'm running a business here. He never paid for the first time. Yeah, because you made me so small that I have shrunk out of my own clothes and there's no way I could open a wallet. Oh, really? You don't have PayPal? Hey, wallet, they just said your name out there. We should do something. It's probably a call for help. This is our time. Good luck figuring out what to do, idiots. <laughs> like, you can come up with a plan. Oh, sunglasses, sunglasses. you just get out sunglasses. all the time. I see the world, so sue me. Pete, I am just lost. Where is this shrink ray doctor? We've been driving around for a half hour. Well, I, I looked on Yelp. Pete, did you take the medication? <clears throat> Sorry, it's every 15 minutes, yes, I forget. Yes, it's, uh, I honest looked, to God, guy, you know, it's hard to listen to. It's you know what to, I'm saying? I set a timer on my it's phone. It's terrible. But I turned the sound off and I didn't turn vibrate well, on. Well, there we go. That's you got to You got to set a reminder to set a reminder. You know I what know. I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I shouldn't have looked on Yelp. <laughs> right. <laughs> this one says the business is closed, but that can't be. There's well, gotta, no, the guy just open. went there, yeah. I it's, know. It's got to be open. <laughs> Wait. Uh, Look, she's put us down, and there's a small opening. Everyone lean to the opening. (laughs) 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 Fine. (laughs) Hey, what's going on with your purse, Renee? Oh, it sometimes uh, moves around like like a bag of cats. (laughs) A bag of how many cats? A small bag, two cats. Right. (laughs) Hey, that's enough cats to move a bag. It's plural. That's enough from all of you. You stop your two-cat bag and both of you freeze. Or I will shrink all of you into nothing. Nothing. I don't understand. What do you get out of this? Why are you doing this? I don't know myself anymore. It all started from such an innocent place. I wanted to make the world smaller so we could all be friends. Now. When you grow up, yes, you will be a doctor. Yes, yes, Mama. Uh, you think you could really be a doctor? She was creeping with you because you're a loser. <laughs> Such a loser. What a loser. No. And great Eat- far-side t-shirt loser. <laughs> Eat your giant cookie. <laughs> That's off-brand far-side. It looks like a bazaar. Too big and this t-shirt Eat was it. all I could afford. Eat all of this giant cookie. Eat the giant cookie. I wish it was smaller. It I... will never be smaller unless you eat it smaller. I wish all of you were smaller. I'll show you someday. We're not going to get any smaller. That's weird. Never. How would that even happen? That wouldn't happen. People no. get bigger, not smaller. We hate you. That's horrible. If you only had some sort of ray to increase things, you could make yourself into a giant and your self-esteem would explode. Yes. And people would be terrified of you. Of course. Rules the world through fear as a giant person. Yeah. I did build this reverse switch on my ray. Oh. 
I never thought I would use it. You should test it out first. I'll test it on you, Please. little flabby man. Okay. That Come was on, that's just I know me. what yeah. I look like. You Your don't wife have to... called. She told me to throw something in. Just think about a stair master once in a while. Okay. She she <laughs> to throw something in? What does that mean? She just wanted to, me to remind you that she loves you and she wants you to I be your her. healthy self. I love her so much. She loves you. I love her so she much. She loves you so much. I love her more. Oh, no, she loves you more. Oh, I love her more. Okay, here's the ray. Okay. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> I'm, ba- I- I'm I'm back to normal again, and I'm I'm a little wow. bit taller actually than I was, and so the the weight hangs on me better. You're welcome. Thank you, Doctor. I was just. What's your name, by the way? My name's Thomas. Thomas, you could you could just buy bigger clothes. Shit, you're right. I mean, I don't know why you have to go through life thinking you're the wrong size. I forgot about clothes that they make them in different sizes. Renee, I've been on quite an adventure in your purse. Now that You're I'm not out- the first man to say that. <laughs> Who was the first man to say that? Yeah, I had a great time in here, and uh, why don't you call me sometime and we'll... All right, the next time you're trucking through our great state, you let me know. Yeah, no problem. Have fun in Austin. Thanks. So he didn't say word for word. No, I'm... Um, it- I was, was thinking was about what he said right after. Right. Okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Renee, listen. I'm a. I'm a married man. Yeah. And I love my wife. I'm not. She I've loves you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. But. I'm worried sometimes that you're just. You're maybe just alone. Do you feel lonely? <laughs> She's not alone. What's? Hey, did you hear that? I think that was my gross tic tac. It was. So you can hear them too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind. It's really weird. I don't want to put people off. But yeah, I can hear them. I got a lot of friends. Me, Abraham Lincoln, sunglasses. Penny, penny, a penny. We believe in you. As Wallet. Yeah, we Tuan, all love a, you. You're yeah. a bad bitch. <laughs> you're a bad bitch. <laughs> oh, and I'm never going to spend you, Penny. I'm going to round up to five every time. (laughs) That's right. Because when you save me, you earn me. Right? That's the phrase. Yeah. In your way. That's right. And gross Tic Tac, I'm never going to eat you. And I'm Uh, just going to let you get all the lint off the bottom. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend eating me either. Listen, this is... It's gotten pretty bad. This is really stupid, but, um... I have some of this chartreuse nail polish or whatever on one of my arms, and, uh... Can we leave it there? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, of course. As a reminder of this day. Yeah. And Tom, look, it's on your feet. Oh, it you is. Got I got chartreuse feet. Wow, I guess this worked out for everybody. Except that little girl in the car. And your wife. Well, I'm just going to go home. Oh, right. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I mean, now I'm, now I'm normal size, and I'm actually a little taller than I was before, so she'll probably be happy about that. Oh. Well, hey, hey, gross Tic Tac, Penny, yeah. sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, that's my wallet. She's old. Oh. Wallet, even you too. You guys really taught me a lot about being small and getting out of a purse. I'll never forget you guys. Good luck, Tom. Good luck to you, Renee. Thanks a lot. Every day. I might change my ways. Don't change your way, Renee. Because you're okay. (laughs) Was I not supposed to be part of this? I'll go on the other road. Yeah, I was doing like the song. Oh, I'm sorry. It was sort of a, almost like a heartfelt song parody. Oh, on I see. Don't Walk Away, Renee. I don't, not into music. I'll go in the other room. Oh, but doctor, we should have... Uh, don't Now that the experiment works, don't you want to be enlarged? I thought so, but you guys seem so happy, and I don't suppose you have anything in that purse of for me. Oh. Hey. Ah. What if... What if you were to shrink yourself down with your own ray and live inside Renee's purse? Do you mean it? This is great! 
yeah. all these people. Calm down. Ugh. <laughs> oh my goodness, the talking fire sunglasses. I never saw that to the day. Oh my god. We get it. You shrunk yourself down. I love you most of all, Tic Tac. And it all happened in a place called Inside a 40 year old woman's purse. Eliza Skinner, where can people find you online should they wish to do so? Um, I'm at Eliza Skinner on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And I've got a, um, uh, yeah, you, that's a good, you just look there. There's a bunch of other. What were you going to say? I got a website, it's elizaskinner.com. <laughs> I give all the other stuff too. But do you want a whole list? Just go to Twitter and you find all the other junk that there. Absolutely. It's a pro Lincoln bio, as yeah, they say. Yeah, of course. You know, Instagram podcasts, all that stuff. Uh, when is Turned Up? When can people see that? It's every Tuesday of the month. The second Tuesday of the month. Not every Tuesday. Second Tuesday of every month at 11 o'clock at the UCB. Uh, it's always really fun. It's, it's great. It's an amazing show. Uh, great guests. Uh, crazy people stop by. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some freestyle rap battles going on. Oh, yeah. It is very exciting. It's cool. There we go. Thank you so much for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. Jane, where can people find you online? Uh, uh, UCB Franklin Friday nights. I do a show called Soundtrack. That's right. And uh, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock at I.O. West, I do a show called Quartet with mm-hmm. Craig Kukowski, fellow Spontaneous Nation. That's right. Please Carla see. Kukowski sometimes. Oh, yes. uh-huh. There's rotating people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rob Dassey, who's been on the show. Uh-huh. It's uh, I, I want to come to one of these shows because I keep seeing pictures of it, and it looks so great. It's a fun time. I can't wait to see it. And also... Um, there's oh, a new oh, show. I'm oh, going to be on a show. Oh, what? <laughs> Gene. Baskets on FX. If all goes well next week, by the time this airs, I'll be on that show. And it's going to start airing in January. On, what has um, to happen next week? Well, I'm going to shoot the episode next week. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying there's a possibility you might not get to shoot it. Someone might steal the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Baskets uh, stars like, Zach Galifianakis yes. as a rodeo clown. That's right. There we go. In Beverly Hills. That's all you need to know. Hal Lub Lynn. Yes. Wait, did you say your online stuff? Oh, no. Villa Peak. Villa Peak. You can just Google me. Yeah. Just Google her. <laughs> God. I'm not going to. Guys, I'm not going to spoon feed you all this information. Sorry about that, Hal. Hal, uh, what do you want to tell people? It's fine. You can find me on Twitter at Hal Lublin, <laughs> and you can listen to We Got This with Mark and Hal, which is on iTunes and on the Maximum Fun Network. And in like a week, I'll, it'll be my birthday. Oh, How exciting. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Hal. Happy birthday to you. Take that, Mildred and Patty Hill. <laughs> really went for it. Mark McConville. Yes. Give me the things. Okay. M- uh, oh, I almost <laughs> didn't tell you the right thing. You almost said your name. Yeah. <laughs> McConville. McConville. <laughs> uh, I'm on Twitter at Mark McConville. All right. And any shows you do regularly yeah, in the area? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Paul. Yeah. There's a bunch of them. Oh. I do opening night, the improvised musical, every Friday at 9 at... I O West, and let's see. I do Super Ego. Check that out. Go Super Ego on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, Pistol Shrimps Radio will have concluded oh, at the time of so this uh, when you hear this. And what a season it's been! Right? They went. They won all their games. <laughs> <laughs> they won every <laughs> single game. But that, perfect season. We have a Twitter, and it's Shrimps Radio. Mm-hmm. And I look. I highly endorse Pistol Shrimps Radio, the podcast. And follow them on Twitter because even the Twitter is funny. There's some funny stuff on there. Oh, thank you. Yes, I've been enjoying it. Good. There you go. Yeah, and Guys, then uh, I got a bunch of lists. You got that's right. You're that making Tumblr. those lists so on Tumblr. Um, thank you all for being here. Eben Schletter, EbenSchletter.com. Go to EbenSchletter.com and buy all of his albums because Eben Schletter is only the best. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting us. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for en- Engineer Ryan for being a gerund today. Thank you for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. As for me, guess what? No You Shut Up is coming back with a vengeance. We'll be back in February. We're looking at the 2016 election. Uh, This is going to be exciting stuff with silly puppets. Guys, check it the fuck out. I'm telling you to do so. The next live Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins will happen at Largo at the Coronet. I think... In February? I'm not sure. 
One I know for sure there will be a plug in this episode. So maybe I've already plugged it and you know. Why am I bothering to talk about stuff I don't know? <laughs> Who can say? Oh, what a mystery is man. That's it, guys. Goodbye forever. Until next week. This is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in Presenti! This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Adam Sachs, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com. 